like Britain, feels proud that their country has offered asylum to the distinguished author Simon Ball, and that he has chosen his country as his new home. Those are very kind words, Mr. Sanford. The press has been most kind and generous, and I must say I am delighted for this opportunity to meet my publisher at long last and to thank you in person for all the services you have rendered me. It's a great honor, Kerbog. Just Simon will do. Of course, Simon. You realize that all of England is most impressed by your revolutionary theories of the human mind, expounded in your novels. However, if I may get straight to the point... I should hope you will. Well, you see, most of your work has been done in Germany. And very remote and distant to interest all of your readers here in England, correct? Precisely. With the complexities of the human mind being universal, I have therefore just finished another novel on the subject. Oh? In fact, Professor Ratcliffe, who taught criminology at one of your prominent universities over 40 years ago, helped me a great deal. I don't understand. In the course of doing some research, I came across these notes of his. Years ago, Professor Ratcliffe exchanged notes on the crimes that he had investigated and studied with a professor in Germany. I must say I was fortunate to discover them. My latest novel is based on these notes. Now that would interest your readers here in England. Indeed it would. Especially since the case deals with criminal insanity. A focal point for your new... Naturally. Cigar. No, thank you. No, no. Very uh, well, let's get to the matter at hand. My new novel is pure fiction. These notes only triggered my imagination into the fantastic. My story takes place during the reign of Queen Victoria. And the attitude during that period of the criminally insane was very harsh. Indeed. In England, as well as the rest of the world during the time of Queen Victoria, insanity was a final condemnation, always much too easily arrived at. As in the Middle Ages, it was looked upon as the black plague of the mind. The setting of my story is the city of London. And it was here in an environment of fear and evil that I have planted the first seeds of torment in the mind of the pivotal character, Anna. There was another murder. They're looking for Jack the Ripper. and strains during early childhood can mold the mind into having detrimental effect on one's action in later life. It was here where it was not only stress and strain, but indeed a shock of terror that triggered the delicate mechanism of turbulence in the mind of my character, Anna, as an innocent child. Mm -hmm. years lapse, and we see our character Anna being exploited as a conspirator by a notorious medium who I have named Auntie Golding. Golding, so lonely. I'm so cold, Granny. Mary, dear, listen carefully to Granny. There's no one with you in the spirit world to play with, dear. I have created aspects of Anna's sociological background to help portray her mind. After her mother's death and her father's final disappearance, she lived first with one neighbor or another and with some of her mother's acquaintances. So you know me, God. Frequently, she was torn back and forth between homes. With these haphazard arrangements, she had no opportunity for any sense of security. Anna lived in a world of her own full of dreams and nightmares of horrible scenes which she could not understand, but from which she would awake screaming. That's not cold here, Granny. 
I hear voices, strange voices. I can't make out what they're saying. During the growth of my character, Anna, she did not have temper tantrums or aggressive outbursts in her early years, so there were no signs of mental problems ahead. Now I present her at the age of 15, when a great change has occurred in her personality. You must try, dear, or Granny will get very annoyed. And you mean I have involved Dr. Pritchard into giving false testimony. What motivation did you use to prompt Dr. Pritchard's behavior? I wanted to establish in his role a patent that required a degree of psychological aberrancy amounting almost to a monomania at times. As we will progress, I will try to explain to you Dr. Pritchard's peculiar motivation. Relationship between the characters Dr. Pritchard and Anna, I employed several factors. The first was the doctor's strong sense of wanting to know the causes of Anna's behavior. The desire of research for all answers, which is natural motivation for most doctors. But in this case, it became an exaggerated desire to the extent that he concealed several murders. The second factor was that of a lonely man who had lost his wife years before and was also about to lose his son in marriage. He treats Anna in a fatherly way and as a patient. Then, as she grows more beautiful, his interest takes on a different tone, thereby creating a conflict between the doctor and the man. Another but mild conflict I created between the characters, father and son, was that of the blind fiancé. My story is written foremost to entertain my readers. But I do hope I have, in some small way, been able to focus attention on the grave problem of the mentally ill that exists, even until today.